So, change agents. Uh, I know a little bit about it because, again, I failed at this also. We talked about failure yesterday. And let me explain how we as a company started out our innovation agenda when I was hired six years ago. A little bit about VF again for those who, had, who weren't here yesterday. Um, a lot of brands you're probably familiar with, apparel and footwear. But what you may not know is that these are 30 independent brands that were pretty much purchased uh, as, a, as sort of a holding company mindset. So we'd stitch together the back end, but we wouldn't integrate the front end. So the marketing, the brand, the sales, the product didn't really talk to each other. Um, 16 offices and a lot of employees. And what it really meant is that we had a culture that looked like this. Okay? One that was because um, the back end was so important, the supply chain, the finance, that drove the company decisions. And that made us very sort of afraid of risk. It made us focus on short-term sort of investments versus long-term investments, or actually short-term cost savings, really. And then lastly, it encouraged this idea of insular thinking. So a couple, couple of nuances about this idea of insular thinking. It was very pronounced in the company about six years ago, and let me explain why. One, because we purchased these companies and left them fairly independent, they all had their independent cultures. You have to imagine having a Vans person sitting next to somebody who's selling Seven for Mankind, sitting next to somebody that was selling Reefs, sitting next to somebody who was a climber from the North Face. Very different cultures, right? Or somebody who was part of the Western culture and did rodeos for Wrangler. So that was one reason why they were fairly distinct. Another is, back about six or seven years ago, we actually played our brands against each other. We'd say, hey, Vans. North Face grew at 20%. You were at 18. What's going on? You're laggard here, you know? And, and so it was very competitive. And just to illustrate the point, the first time I went to visit uh, the Alameda, I was actually, we were in San Leandro, California. The offices there was our outdoor coalition. So we had, I think, Lucy, Jansport, uh, North Face, a brand sitting in the same sort of facility. Now, Jansport sells backpacks, and so does the North Face. So you had the North Face equipment team sitting on one side of a cubicle wall, and on the other side of the cubicle wall was sitting Jansport, okay? And it was literally like the Korean DMZ. They would not talk to each other. It would be sac sacrilegious if you went over there and, and actually did anything or shared anything. And that's the environment that we were up against when we were thinking about how do we bring innovation and innovation culture uh, to VF. And, and we wanted to go from sort of the idea of mitigating risk to taking more risk, the idea of <clears throat> short-term cost mindset to more investment, and ultimately about becoming more collaborative, both inside the company and outside the company. And the last thing about apparel companies is it's run by a lot of merchants. And the thing with merchants is that uh, they spent most of their life predicting what consumers want two or three years from now. So their mindset is, I don't need to talk to consumers. I'll tell them what they want, right? So we weren't even talking to our consumers. OK, big failure, epic, all right? So e epic in terms of what we tried to do. He here's our initial solution to our innovation agenda. It looked like this. 120 slides that we were going to share with everybody, OK? And worse yet, most of the slides looked like that. OK, that is what we began with, all right? And that was when I started the job. And we were about to launch an innovation agenda in two months, OK? And, and imagine we're going to get up in front of 200 leaders, go through 120 pages looking like that. Boy, is that really doing service to the horizontal of the T? Is that envisioning? Is that energizing? Is that story? No, OK. So thank God my boss, Stephen Duell, who is really in charge of the strategy and innovation for the entire company and sort of our forward thinker for the company, working with our CEO, Eric, he read this book, and it changed everything. And I mean literally everything. We took the entire 120-page deck and threw it out the window. We took all the plans for our innovation summit, threw it out the window. And tomorrow morning, I'll share, you, share with you what we actually did.